Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Saurabh. Thanks for my introduction, uh, Aditya. I'm here to present our work on measuring congestion in high-performance data center interconnects. This work was done in collaboration with National Center for Supercomputing Applications, located at University of Illinois, Sandia National Labs, and Cray. Let me start by giving an overview on high-performance computing. High-performance computing, or HPC, is used to solve large compute-intensive problems that require timely solutions. These include critical science, engineering, and research problems such as weather forecasting and drug discovery. In particular, we are finding HPC as a de facto solution for uh, you know, artificial intelligence uh, training and inference. HPC can be found everywhere. Uh, it's on the cloud, and also it's on the academic and national labs. HP systems are used for increasing research and science throughput. Oh, one sec. At the core, high-performance high computing systems achieve massive scaling by using high-speed networks. Um, high-speed networks offer low per-hop latency, low tail latency variation, and high bisection bandwidth. Despite the low tail latency, high-speed networks are susceptible to congestion. Consider the cause uh, case of Blue Waters, a petascale system hosted at the University of Illinois. The animation here shows the congestion um, patterns observed in the system in production settings. Empirically, we have observed that such congestion can cause up to 2 to 4x application performance variation in production setting. Uh, for example, when we empirically look, looked at molecular dynamics code, which is 1,000 uh, node job, uh, we found up to 2x slowdown. We also launched multiple benchmark applications, such as adaptive mesh refinement, AMR, in the presence of real production workload, and observed up to 4x similar slowdowns. Thus, we are confronted uh, with the following important question. First, how often systems and applications are experiencing such congestion? Second, what are the culprits behind the congestion? And the third, how do we design efficient networks and systems which either reduces the congestion or mitigates the effect of congestion on the workload? To tackle these questions, we have created a data mining and ML-driven methodology and associated framework. Uh, the metho methodology enables evaluation and characterization of empirical data obtained from production systems. It can help identify factors leading to the congestion. It can also check if the application slowdown was indeed due to congestion, you know, because there are other factors like file system and so on um, that can also be responsible for it. We characterize the empirical data obtained from a production supercomputer called Blue Waters, which has one of the largest 3D Torus interconnect till date. We have released one of the largest data set on congestion and first publicly available data set for HPC networks. The data set has already been downloaded more than 50 times in the last six months. In this talk, I'll only focus on empirical study and the key findings. Please refer to the paper for the details on diagnostics and online analytics capabilities. So let me start by giving a hint of first few uh, key findings. There are many more in the paper, uh, and please go and read the paper. It's an interesting one. <laughs> uh, High-speed network congestion is the biggest contributor to application performance uh, variation. And I showed a couple of slides before. It can be up to two to four times. Such impact is caused by the congestion regions that exist in the system. For example, the figure here shows one of the congestion regions in the red. These congestion regions can exist for multiple hours, sometimes even up to a day. Further, we find that such congestion exists for a long time because of the default mitigation mechanisms fail to alleviate the congestion. In our study, we observed more than 3,000 cases of congestion that can impact applications. However, mitigation mechanisms was triggered in only 8% of such cases. Even when these mitigation mechanisms were triggered, the congestion continued or even became worse in one third of the cases. Finally, we find that the congestion region, as shown in the figure, are, and their tracking uh, enables identification of culprits behind congestion. The, we, we saw in the previous talk about identifying victims and so on. Uh, similar kind of methodologies exist here. Uh, and also, <laughs> we can drive system insights and network design to better handle uh, congestion for such production systems. So before I go and talk more about the study and the finding, let me first define congestion here. 
Our study is focused on credit-based flow control networks. In such network, FLIT is the smallest unit of data that you can send on, uh, on the link. Unlike other protocols such as Rocky, uh, FLIT in this network are not dropped during congestion. This is achieved with the help of credits. Uh, credits are based on the buffer size at the receiving side. A sender only sends a FLIT if it has required number of credits. Consider the example shown here. Switch 1 has three credits to begin with, uh, and hence can send three FLITs. Once the credits are over, FLITs cannot be sent anymore. So in, in a sense, the uh, link is busy waiting or stalled now. Note that here the inability to send the FLIT to the next hop is referred as congestion, and such conditions frequently occur in the network due to adverse traffic patterns such as in cast flows. We can quantify this inability to send the traffic to the next hop using percent time stalled metric, or PTS. Percent time stalled metric quantifies the percentage of cycles for which the link was stalled during the measure time interval. We can count all the cycles in which the link was stalled and use it to find the percent time stalled metric for every link in the network. Let's assume that there are 12 cycles in the measured interval as shown here. If the link was stalled for five of those cycles, the percent time stalled will be roughly about 42%. In this study, however, we measured the percent time stalled uh, at 60 second intervals. Fortunately, such counters already exist on modern switches that we leverage for this study. However, such measurements individually, though informative, are less useful uh, for practical purposes. In order to use PTS in a more meaningful way, we leverage an important insight, which is that the congestion on the network fans out from a source of origin. Uh, the previous speaker talked about congestion tree, and the similar insight holds here. If we go back to our previous animation, here link one was stalled, and if the link one uh, is stalled for too long, switch three and four will eventually exhaust the buffer space on switch one and also stall, thus spreading the congestion. The effect of which can be seen in the congestion visualization shown for our system. Through this visualization, we can see that the network is not always 100% congested and tends to be clustered in the network. Naturally, it makes sense to characterize the network using these clusters of link, which we call as regions of congestion. Hence, in our work, we use regions of congestion for characterizing network. To identify regions of congestion, we developed unsupervised clustering algorithm that, the cluster, that clusters the links that are close to one another and have similar percent time stalled values. Since these regions of congestion have similar percent time stalled values, we can also assign severity scores. In this work, we used fixed threshold to differentiate levels of congestion into four groups. These are negligible, low, medium, and high. Um, using congestion regions as a metric, we can track the propagation of congestion in the network, both in time and space. Another benefit of using congestion region is massive decrease in the data set size for downstream analytics in online settings that we leverage for our framework. We were able to reduce the data set size from tens of terabytes to few megabytes as we only need to store the boundary points of these congestion regions. Furthermore, our data shows strong correlation with application performance degradation and congestion severity of congestion regions that intersect with the application boundaries. Empirically, we find such correlations to hold true for many production applications, including the molecular dynamics code that I showed earlier. In this graph, for example, as we see, the congestion severe, as the congestion severity increases, so does the application runtime. Now that we have defined congestion, let me give you details on the system size, network features, and data set. We evaluated our methodology and characterized network congestion on Blue Waters. Blue Waters is, a, uh, is an academic supercomputer hosted at the University of Illinois and supported by NSF. Blue Waters has roughly 28,000 nodes and uses Cray Gemini Interconnect to connect the nodes in 3D tourist topology. This is the largest 3D tourist topology ever built till date. Hence, providing us with the insights for future systems and design. In our study, we use data sets consisting of network reliability events, performance counters, and workload data. Network reliability events can be collected using the default Cray network monitors. The performance counters can be collected using lightweight distributed metric service, or LDMS. And uh, workload data can be easily uh, ta uh, taken from scheduler logs. Finally, uh, 
you know, I'm only going to share results from our characterization study. However, our framework can also be run in online mode, uh, details for which are available in the paper. In the beginning of the talk, we saw how congestion can lead to two to four times end-to-end -end performance degradation. This is because there are long-lived congestion in the system. In particular, we find that the congestion regions can continuously exist up to 24 hours. The median duration for which the congestion regions can exist is about 10 hours. And this is a fact of both the workload that we have on the system as well as the network design. Uh, <clears throat> Moreover, as we expected, we find that there are mo uh, more congestion regions at low severity levels uh, compared to congestion regions at high severity levels, which is probably not surprising for many of us. But what is surprising is that congestion regions can continuously exist for up to 24 hours across all severity scores. That is, even if you are high, your congestion region can go up to 24 hours. So to investigate the reasons for long-lived congestion because of the network design issues, uh, we looked and investigated the efficiency and effectiveness of default congestion detection and mitigation mechanisms. In particular, during our five months of study, congestion mitigation mechanism was only triggered 260 times. And the median time between triggers was about seven hours. Sorry about that. <laughs> Using our framework, we find that the, in one third of the cases, mitigation mechanisms did not alleviate congestion. To understand the reasons, we need to understand the mitigation algorithm. The default mitigation algorithm involves throttling of injection of traffic from all NICs such that the aggregate traffic injection bandwidth over all compute nodes is less than what can be ejected to a single node. Obviously, this mechanism is aggressive and designed to handle extreme cases of in-cache traffic. However, this does not identify the reasons for congestion and controlling for those factors and therefore is not guaranteed to be successful in alleviating congestion, as can be seen from the example here. So in this example, for uh, in this case, when the congestion mitigation was invoked, actually the con congestion on the system became worse. Why? Because the factors that were causing the congestion were not really handled properly. Not only the congestion mitigation is not effective, but it also misses many instances of congestion that adversely impact applications. In our study, we found roughly uh, 3,500 such cases, and we observed that the default algorithms acted only on 8% of these cases, thus failing to mitigate the culprits behind the congestion. Our framework enables identification of all those 3,500 cases, and what uh, it does is uh, it finds a congestion region almost every hour. There are various factors or so-called culprits causing the congestion. We have developed mechanism to identify and tag these congestion causing factors as and when they occur. The details of the algorithm are available in the paper. The three factors that we uh, broadly classify into are system reasons such as load on the system and their placement, the application placement, reliability reasons such as uh, link failures, uh, and applications own communication patterns leading to intra-application congestion. The identification was immensely helpful to system managers in production setting. For example, our partners at NCSA improved the overall system throughput by 56% by tuning the resource allocation strategies for application. The uh, details of this is available in, the, in, a, in, a, um, in a technical report, but uh, it essentially involves using topology-aware scheduling for applications. Similarly, when we find uh, the that the congestion is entirely within the application geometry, we label this as an intra-app congestion. When such cases are found, the congestion can be minimized by choosing a different process rank mapping, uh, or you know, uh, we can go and talk to the developers and figure out what are they doing in their code to cause such congestion. Hence, in production, we can use this kind of identification to help either improve the system efficiency or the application. In conclusion, we developed and validated our methodology and the framework on production data sets. The code is available online, and you can go and download it and play with uh, the data set, as well as the code. For our future work, 
we continue to characterize production data sets obtained from newer technologies and topologies. We recently measured congestion on Cray Aries network, which is a dragonfly topology that are being uh, widely used today uh, almost on all supercomputers. Not surprisingly, uh, we found that the congestion remains as an ongoing problem, and this visualization shows the congestion propagation and uh, you know, uh, severity with time. Therefore, our future work involves optimizing congestion control and routing policies for improving system throughput, and inferring and meeting application demands adaptively. To know more about these challenges in solving those problems, visit us at the poster session. Thank you for listening to me, and I can take any questions at this point. OK, we have plenty of time for questions. Yeah. I don't know if this is on. Yeah. Testing, no. Hi. So I'm just wondering if what you call congestion seems to be credit scarcity, really, right? Because it's actually, there's no, the link's not overflowing, right? There's actually no traffic on a link during congestion because there's no credit. So where do credits come from? That so seems to be pretty important for the scheme. So the credit comes from the buffer, right? As uh, It depends on the buffer size at the receiver side. So if you don't have the credits, yes, you cannot send right. the traffic anymore, and that's what we are calling as congestion here. Right. So, so yeah. that, that, the term threw me off for a long time until I understood there was actually lack of credits that, that okay. you're causing. So, so, so why don't fix it that way? Right? Why, it seems like the credit allocation scheme is sort of not really smart. Right. So that might be a way to look at this. Further. Exactly. That's what we are now looking at. So the idea is to kind of identify these victims and you know, uh, aggressors and kind of give credits accordingly. So it has to be more smarter on the switch. And the challenge is how do you do in online setting where the speed of these links are at like nanoseconds? Any other question? So I was just curious, uh, maybe it's a follow on to Lars's question. How exactly does congestion mitigation and avoidance work today? I mean, you know, you're seeing 24 hour long periods of congestion. So what happens? I mean, is there an application level mechanism or switch level mechanism? So these are like uh, software uh, and switch both combination approach where some software at a you know, controller looks at the congestion values and the traffic that is on the network and decides whether to kind of start throttling the links, right? So since the throttling mechanism is so aggressive, they are not uh, launched frequently because if you're throttling so aggressively, you are basically going to kill the traffic on the system, more or less, right? Okay. Thank the speaker once again. <clears throat>